It's yogurt time, but sometimes there isn't enough yogurt. So you just got to get another yogurt container. And then you can open that and then mix it and then have more yogurt. Yogurt. More yogurt. More yogurt. How much should I have? More yogurt. Let's see. Eh, a little bit more yogurt. Alrighty, that'll be my snack. Ooh, it's raining. Finally, the other day it was supposed to rain, but it never ended up actually raining. But it's raining now, finally. Hopefully it never stops. It's raining here, but it's completely blue sky over there. I don't actually know if the camera's picking up any of the rain. Let's try this side. Yeah, you can kind of <laughs> see the rain, but there's just completely blue skies there. Over here we have a little bit of a dark cloud, but it's just been raining for a few seconds and just stopping, then raining for a few seconds and stopping. It's just really weird. Just got into the eBay room. Gonna try and list a couple more things again. And uh, yeah, I, already, I just listed one thing last night and uh, already sold it. We Sports listed for 12 and a half bucks. I sold it for 11.75 best offer plus tax and shipping. So that's a nice sale. So that'll get shipped out on Tuesday. And so, still got a whole bunch of other stuff to list. I'm going to probably first finish listing the Lego sets. Because it's got a couple more of them listed. This is always just a really nice site. It's just so fun to just look at it all. But yeah, then I'm going to probably first get the rest of the Lego listed. And then try and clear off this table. I know I'm probably should list the Luigi's Mansion game first. Just so I can get a nice sale from that. That'll sell fast probably. And then something like Super Mario Land and stuff like that. So overall, pretty good stuff. Oh yeah, there's the Luigi's Mansion, but then I'll just get stuff set up and work on that stuff first. Oh, look at all the rain. It's even crazier than before. Let's open the window. Oh, look at this. It still looks like nothing's even in the sky, but it is pouring rain out. It's nice. In person it saw, not quite as clear as it is in the video, but in person it looks like there's way more rain. It's amazing. I have finally finished listing all of my sister's Lego sets. They are now all on the shelves at the future price point of one or two years from now, what they hope to sell for. And uh, yeah, it's nice to have them all for sale. Now I'm gonna tackle some of the other stuff, probably try and get a bit of this Galador stuff listed um, and stuff like that. And so yeah, then I'm going to figure that stuff out now. Try to clear off this table so that I can have some room to move the laptop from here to over there and stuff like that. So yeah, it's going pretty good. Oh man, it is amazing outside. Oh, is there a bit of lightning maybe? Wow, it's been like this for like an hour. Oh, some lightning. It's been like this for like an hour or two now. It's quite nice. Just want to wait for a thunder sound real quick. Because it's been getting quite loud sometimes. Oh. Wow, that was a nice one. Got one package in the mail today, and it was just some replacement parts for the one order. I think I have the thing here. I still haven't gotten to this one yet, uh, but it's for this one for the guy's face and legs are in here. Same with the new Obi Wan head and arms for the two torsos. Um, and uh, so yeah, that's that. So then that'll be good now. And uh, I still need to contact the seller about this if that's what I'm gonna do. I still don't know yet. It is just always a lot of work and 
not not much fun to contact sellers for large amounts of damaged parts. But yeah, like I mean, minifigure parts, you pay high prices for these. Like most of these, I paid like this one was like three bucks. This was like a dollar probably. Can't remember though. But yeah, like you pay for it, and then if it runs damaged, then the sellers almost always do refund. But I mean, it's not fun to have to take photos of every part, send an email to the seller and then wait for a response and stuff like that but it works out most of the time it's not even 1 30 it looks like i'm getting an early start to work today i am going to list some of the thin ring thingamabobs and then after that i don't think i'll list these yet because they still have to be sorted into colors first and then stacked um so I'll probably first list these and then maybe a little bit of the Galador stuff, but probably something else instead. So we got some pretty good ones over here. We got the light gray ones, which go between uh, 3 cents to 12 bucks a piece. And we've got the white ones worth 3 cents to 12 bucks a piece as well. And we've got quite a few of them. And yep, these are all the thin ring versions of them. Oh, the thick ring versions are over there. And uh, the thing is, I highly doubt any of them. Actually, well, is this one actually in nice condition? Let me see. Huh, this one might actually be in good condition. I, I, I'll have to check closer later, but that might be like the only one that I don't have to add remarks for it being damaged for. And, oh, wait, well, maybe this one as well. I don't know. I'll have to look closely at them all still, but most of them are going to be listed as damaged. But, uh, yeah, pretty good find. So if there's 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 25, 26, 28, 30, 32, 34, 36, 38, 40, 42, 44. So there's about 44 of them. I probably counted wrong. Uh, so, yeah, at least 44 bucks, but probably a bit more. But then a lot of them are going to be damaged, which is also going to drive down the price and stuff like that. But pretty good overall. I just listed the blue ones for, like, a dollar each i think or something like that but these ones i didn't list but all the ones i did list were listed as has medium slash moderate damage and fading and so yeah now i'll get to listing these i'll probably do the light gray first because i don't like listing white parts because they often get yellowed which makes it not fun oh man look how bad this one is let's see if i can zoom in but yeah look at that thing that is nasty well it's it's not nasty it's just bite marks but that one goes there. Is there anything else quite that bad? I don't know. Oh, that one might just be on the bottom. Yeah, that would be something that would be listed with the damage mentioned. Is there any really bad... Oh, look at this one. That is just... Let's get the... Look at that one. That is just bad. That one's gonna go there as well. But yeah, then I'll get to work on these. And I did win another eBay lot. I'll just get a photo up quick. I have four days to pay it, which is the standard for eBay stuff. And uh, it's a pretty good lot. I got it. It's, um, okay, one second. I don't want to show their information. Okay, let's see here. It is, uh, let's move it a bit. 3.7 pounds for only 255 Canadian plus shipping and tax. And that does not include the weight of the box here, which is this set over here, which some of you may know as the one that has the green minifigures in it, which go for quite a bit. And yep, they are in there. One's in the tray and one's in the box. But then 255 Canadian is for all the American viewers out there. Is 196 American. That is a pretty good deal for almost four pounds of minifigures. And so, yeah, I got in contact with the seller. They're fine with me uh, taking a few days to pay. Uh, I sometimes do bid on things with money I hope to have in the future. Uh, because, I mean, worst case scenario, you could just take out a loan or something like that to pay for it. But uh, it's pretty good overall. And I should have the funds. I mean, I might have them already. But the thing with it, paying with PayPal, it charges your bank, but not for like a week. And so then you don't know how much money you actually have available by the time they finish all their currency conversion fees and stuff like that. So I'm always uncomfortable bidding on these things until I'm semi-confident that I'd have more than enough. Because in the past, I've been hit with $40 charges by my banks multiple times because I've gone below a negative balance. Because PayPal never charges things fast. And so it confuses me a whole bunch. So I'll... Yeah, it's the 22nd now. I won this on the 19th, so not tomorrow. Or wait, is it tomorrow? I don't know, but soon, probably tomorrow sometime, 
I'm going to pay for this thing. But I'm a bit short on money because I made a couple purchases. Let's see. Um, only the top three right now are ones that I just made. But um, I have spent a bit too much at stores recently. But that's what makes it all fun. What's that? Five. Oh, that's for the Galador stuff. Okay, so yeah. This here is the exciting one that I showed in the one clip in the last vlog. The question is, will anyone be able to figure out what it is? When listing older parts, I sometimes, I use the normal three containers, but then I also have another category here. And so I just finished sorting the light gray ones with the thin rings, and there's absolutely none in the good. There's a couple that have minor damage, the one that I tossed out earlier. But then for older parts that are almost always damaged and still worth good money, I'll have another category for ones that have moderate or heavy damage and list them as such, but I keep them separate and don't always throw them out because generally for older parts, people are more fine with damage and they'll still buy them even if heavier damage and since they are still more valuable parts in general, people will still go for them. So these ones all list as has moderate slash heavy wear and damage most likely and then just these ones as minor damage and then I'll get to the white ones. So yeah, this is why I don't like the white ones. There's one that has minor damage, surprisingly one in good condition. That thing was in beautiful condition. Two of them have marker on it. And then you got all of these in the garbage one. I might just list these as has very heavy damage for a like 50 cents a piece when they normally go for like a dollar a piece or something like that. Just because, I mean, some people really don't care and it is a decently rare part. So I might do that, I'm not sure. But, uh, yeah, this is, uh, why it's my least favorite one to do for old parts specifically. For new parts, it's generally not too big of a deal or anything, but, yeah, for old parts, it's, uh, not too much fun. And then I did submit a inventory change request for this part here, since I do have a new copy of this set here, and the battery pack comes preloaded in the... Uh, torso part but in the inventory it had it as a separate piece so now I'm going to add two parts to the catalog one for this part without the battery piece and I actually just have one part of the catalog which is the torso without the battery piece and then create an inventory for it with uh, the battery piece and the piece without the battery pack and then go like that and hopefully it'll get approved because the admins told me that I should do it that way so that the otherwise this part here won't have any uh catalog entries which could cause problems down the road so I'll have to try to do that later today if I don't forget that is but it makes a weird clicking sound I thought it might be broken at first the one that I had upstairs and that was still brand new but then that clicking sound is on all of them And should be able to hear it a bit. So yeah, at least I know it's not broken, so that's good. So then I'll have to work on that eventually, but I'm just going to list this stuff here now. So I've got the garbage ones that were normally thrown out, and there's 17 of them. I did keep two of them in... Oh, I'll put them in the wrong container. There go on that one. There were two of them I did put back, but then I'm listing them as has very heavy damage and wear yellowing bite marks discoloring dirt etc priced accordingly at 50 cents a piece because if i look at the price guide um that's a pretty decent price considering that they're damaged people are asking in size 478 uh if you want to get them in quantity you have to pay 85 cents a piece for them and people buy them and this is just the canada thing i mean it's gonna be completely different globally and stuff like that but uh so yeah, I, I feel like that's a good price to ask. And so now I just grab all of these parts. Uh, one second, I gotta put them into my hand. Alrighty. And then I chose this drawer for them. And so now I go here and I just click add to inventory. The me 20 minutes from now is probably we're gonna regret doing this, but I think I might list some one by four white plates next. But first, it's almost yogurt time. I'm gonna have yogurt time a bit early. Normally around 2.30, but I mean, if I'm about to start this, I might as well have yogurt first. Because I don't want to have to interrupt this. Because, I mean, look at how nasty some of these things are. Look at that. Like, how? Why? Like, I don't know. But, got lots of them. So, that'll be a nice one out of the way. That's uh, just one container. There's another one with tan. And reddish brown. And blue then red and then let's see that up and then one by one studs 
And then uh, right next to it, black, dark bluish gray, and I can't even lift up the rest. But yeah, there is just so many of these things. But then you get listed eventually. And so then I'll use these containers. I might actually just tell this container full enough. Yeah, for me, this container is full. Of, oh man, there's a dead bug in there again. I I can't wait till one day I buy this house and I can afford renovations because I am going to spend uh I don't know, however much money it costs to like do whatever thing I need to to make it so bugs can't be in this basement. And even if I have to put solid steel on every wall to do it and block all exits, actually that might go against fire code. Then get like an airtight air lock door or something like that. Anything to keep the bugs out. I don't care how much it costs. Once I have the money and probably five ten years that's one thing that's gonna be like my number one priority and there was another bug in there so there's two in there please don't be anything else okay so now go dump that like that and put that in the garbage okay they're gone now so then i'll put this like this and this is probably in there then i'll grab this thing put this here put these back up there this thing's closed then go to uh, Bricklink, click on Inventory, and let that load, and then scroll down to Missing My Remarks right here. Select that, click Go. Nothing's missing remarks, so everything in this box is good to go. So then I'll just grab this box, box 149. And then, yeah, my dad pointed out that uh, I'm, mixing, I'm missing box 142. I don't know where it is it goes 141 to 143 and then 150 so yeah box 142 is a mystery it may never be found but then again i mean it could be right here nope not right here um yeah who knows where it is but there's lots of technic the technic sorting is going decent well i'll finally got some new bags in the mail these are some really weird bags i'll show in a second <laughs> Sorry for that cut. My mom was just laughing really loudly, and uh, I don't think she wants to be in the vlog too much. But look at these bags. They're, they they just they look like the bags you get Lego from on eBay. I, I don't know what it is. They just they're yellow on the top. They they're supposedly better for stretchiness and stuff like that, but they are just really weird. But this is the current sort of Technic stuff so far. Got a lot of these pins already. But yeah, there's lots of lift arms and bricks and everything like that. But then there's still lots of stuff to go. So lots of stuff still. It'll be good fun to list all this stuff. I believe if I'm not mistaken, in here, you can see like this reddish brown one here. Same with another one there and stuff like that. Those are actually exclusive to the Queen Anne's Revenge set. And... uh so yeah, those ones, they're only worth like 50 or 60 cents each, but it's cool to have some exclusive pieces from that. And I mean, I should help a little bit, because I mean, this is being sorted by my dad for free, so I mean, I should help a little bit at least, because I don't feel quite as bad. But uh, this here is nice to get uh, a whole bunch of this sorted, because a lot of this stuff is good to get listed and stuff like that. So yeah, just the update quickly on the Technic. Yogurt. I don't know what it is, but apparently my computer just does not want me to watch The Clone Wars. This is like the sixth time it's happened in the past hour. It just keeps saying that I have to reload the page. So I just keep exiting out or, well, clicking reload and then it reloads it. Sometimes it rewinds to the beginning of the episode. And this one, I put it back to, yep, the beginning of the episode and stuff like that. So, wait, where was I? Oh, uh, this is the previous episode or... No, it's just further along that episode or something like that. But yeah, it just keeps getting it messed up. I don't know what's happening. I'm working on the white one by four plates. I still got all of these guys to go. It's now 5.24 p.m. I got a little bit distracted. Uh, can't remember with what pad there was with something. Um, these are the ones that have minor damage. These are all the ones that are going to be sold as filler. And these are the only good ones. Yeah, this is why I don't like listing white plates. There's like almost nothing good in here. And uh, there's just a lot more to go. And there's just so much filler and damage stuff. It's crazy.
So yeah, I just had a nice order come in. I just sold two of these Palpatine parts for $10 a piece. I got them for $3 a piece in bulk from Europe and one from like Hungary or something like that. And so yeah, they uh, sold a couple now. So that is really nice to get sold now. And so then, uh, yeah, so that's uh, why I like buying parts. Uh, I dropped like a lot of money to get these parts in quantity because I got like... I spent over like 300 bucks on the heads and like I want to say 100 bucks on the legs all in so it'll take a while to get my money back but then after that it'll be nice uh profit finished supper and stuff and I'm back sorting the white plate still got all of these ones left to go and this is the update of minor damage garbage and good and this is why I just really do not like listing plates. Like, I mean, I've been at it all day now and I've pretty much got nothing done. It's, yeah, it takes forever. And that's why I, uh, I'm not a big fan of plates. I can't wait to list something else. That'll be a million times more fun, but just not plates. It is now 9.35 p.m. And I have finally finished checking the white 1x4 plates for damage. This is minor damage, garbage, and good. And yeah, there's just a lot of damaged ones, but this has taken so long. And I've said it so many times before, but I just do not like plates. I am happy that these are done now. I'm going to list these now. These ones are going to be sold as filler, which I'm pretty sure there's a container somewhere over there for them. And, uh, you know, I'll get them all listed now. And then I'm going to pull orders because it's uh, getting close to 10 p.m. But this is probably going to take another 15 to 20 minutes to actually count and list now. So, yeah, I'll probably check in once I do something else later. Sometimes for parts, if an exact count isn't something I'm specifically worried about, then what I do is, and I mean, by exact count, I mean, I don't, I'm not worried about saying I have less than I actually have, so that I, I don't accidentally oversell, but then I have more just to add in as an extra so someone buys them all, or just I can relist them at the end if they're still available and stuff like that. But for parts where an exact count is not necessarily something I'm too worried about for cheap parts, I have the counting scale over here. I already have the weight set up from the previous one. And so then I just grab the containers. I dump them in. And these are the garbage ones. It says I've got 523 of them in here. I'm just going to say I've got 500 of them. Uh, the odds of there being 23 wrong is extremely low. But then this here is a decent count. So then I just go back to the computer i enter a quantity of 500 at uh, two cents a piece these things are literally just filler i have a whole thing for the filler let me expand it so that's the thing i put for filler stuff and so then i thought i actually already had some uh one by four filler parts available but it turns out i don't so now i need to find a container that I can actually put it in. I mean, I could probably keep it in this one, but that's box 217. That's a bit too far away. So if I look, I'm actually at box 150 almost, give or take. So now I just need to see if I can find something close to about that box number. No, those are all box 200s. So then what I do is I can just go over here and I'll just grab, I don't think there's any more empty ones down there. So I'll just grab the next box here box 157 and then come back over here take the lid off grab these parts oh, dump them into I'll dump them into this box since it's a filler part I'm not too worried about them being in bags or anything like that Ooh, my sweater caught this in here let me pick up the ones I dropped real quick my scale is actually partially off the back, so I need to straighten that out real quick. Um, since it's filler parts and it's going to be mixed colors and there's just a lot of them, I don't put them in bags. I just leave them in here. And then once that's done, I just grab my barcode scanner and I scan it. I don't think I've actually addressed it yet, but uh, I'm a big fan of barcodes. I had a lot of ones where I was getting numbers wrong all the time and stuff like that. So I introduced a barcode system. And so for every item boxes, I have a barcode on the side. 
And then for drawers, every single drawer has a barcode on the back. I don't know if it'll focus. It might be there, yeah. And so every single drawer has barcodes on the back of them and normal numbers on the front. And so then whenever I list something, I can just scan it uh, really quickly and it works pretty well. It took a long time to get the program to actually get the barcodes good. I know I had to like manually write out some of the barcodes and then print out them on pages and then the stickers weren't aligned and it was just a huge mess but it's done and I'm not going to be adding too many more in the future thankfully because I hopefully have enough storage for at least a while now and uh, so then it really helps speed things up and I haven't really had any errors significantly uh, with things in the wrong drawers or anything like that as opposed to when I didn't have the barcode system um, but sometimes uh, what was I going to say? Yeah, sometimes I do manually uh, enter the drawer number. Like, I'll just write 00122 in the drawer number and in uh, in the remarks on BrickLink and then put it in that drawer and stuff like that just because I don't feel like picking up the drawer, turning around, scanning it, and then putting it back. If it, I got, like, a whole bunch of variations for them. See, like, here's one, here's one, here's one, here's one. They're all under the same listing. Uh, so I couldn't just have the two drawers over here or three drawers or anything like that. So I had them all up there and uh, It works out pretty well that way. I I generally don't have errors but like once in a blue moon I'll have something in the wrong drawer, but the errors have been significantly cut down since I added barcodes And you may be wondering why there's a zero zero uh, 120 instead of just writing 120 It's because the way that BrickLink actually sorts uh, remarks and stuff like that you need to have zeros in front of something if you wanted to sort it numerically you can't just have drawer one drawer two and then drawer ten you have to have zero one zero two and then you can write in ten for it to sort properly so i just go to a number where i'm pretty sure i'm not going to ever have more than ninety nine thousand drawers so these should be good for as long as i use drawers for i i didn't want to go for having 9,999 because I've already got over 6,000 drawers so just to be on the safe side is like I'll just pretend that I'm gonna hit 10,000 drawers one day one day and then I don't want to have to redo my entire system so I'll just go like that and then for boxes I have I believe yeah I also have up to 99,000 before I would need to revamp the system and then for the sticker binder I went just as crazy as with the drawers i thought that one day just to be on the safe side i would make sure i also didn't have like ninety nine thousand uh sticker pages and stuff like that so that's all like that and it works out pretty well and hopefully i will never need to uh update their marks for all of my listings and that's all sorted by remarks numerically because i on oh, bricklink when i pull orders it sorts by remarks so it just makes everything a lot easier Almost forgot that I actually have to finish listing uh, the one by four filler plates. So now I click enter and then these are listed under the not available color. So then they are, I don't have to worry about getting all the colors in different things. And then I just click add to inventory. Then if I click uh, edit item, go to the part ID, you can see it's listed under not applicable color and some other stores also sell some filler stuff. It's not like they sell too often or anything like that, but I mean, it is better than them just ending, ending up in the landfill. Um, I, since it did take longer to get those listed than I was thinking, I'm not going to pull orders tonight, but I am going to get the two things I think it is that I sold on eBay that are in the eBay room. So I'll check in once I get there and I'll just pull those, but then I'll call it a day at that point. Okay, I am at the eBay inventory room. Let's find the two items that I sold. Got the light on. Got to just take in that view again. That is always beautiful every time I see it. I did list a couple of the new Galador sets I got in the mail. I've got one more over there. But uh, I didn't sell those things. I sold this controller for, I believe, 40 bucks plus shipping and tax. And then I just listed it and already sold Wii Sports. This thing's uh, got slightly damaged case. The disc was heavy scratching. And I believe they paid $11.75 with $2.99 on shipping and tax on top of that. I believe this one was $15 shipping. 
And uh, so yeah, a few sales, nothing too drastic, but nice to get a few things out of the eBay room sold. So yeah, still got lots of stuff to list. There is just so much, but yeah, it's gonna take a long time to list it, but at least got a new laptop up here. So I'll be able to get a little bit of work done, but uh, not anything tonight. I'm gonna push the chair back in and grab this stuff and bring it downstairs so that tomorrow I can ship it out. I think I might put some cardboard around the Wii Sports game and then this controller will go in a small box. So yeah, that's a couple sales. So that I don't forget about it, I'm gonna quickly just uh, grab a screwdriver and remove the uh, battery pack here and put it out on my table so I can remember to create those listings sometime in the future. That thing's actually a bit damaged. Is the other one in better condition? Not really, that's unfortunate. Mm, this one's a little bit better. Um, yeah, it's unfortunate that the uh, items got somewhere. I might, yeah, I can't use the brand new one for, uh, and take out the thing because then it wouldn't be new anymore. So I'll have to use that one then for the stock image for BrickLink. And so I'll get that removed and figure that out some other time. Yogurt! And a mysterious white powder. Cocaine? So I did have a mistake in the order here. I had this Han Solo torso right here with the medallion on it. And I sold it, but then I couldn't find it in my drawer. I had a different Han Solo torso in the drawer. So either I mislisted that torso, which I would find very unlikely. Or I had a different torso, which I sold. And then I accidentally shipped this one out. And then still the other one in the drawer, something like that. So now I had this torso and I couldn't find it anywhere. But luckily, I uh, was able to find my... Uh, Han Solo drawer, which is in my Star Wars name drawer, and then I was able to find the torso, and uh, it's right, uh, let me just dump it out real quick, and then, oh, and then I was actually able to find a torso in the same stated condition, and so now I'm able to ship that out, so it is good to have a um, storage area for parts, so if you ever have problems, you can find parts that you might be missing, and ship them out. So that was a nice save there. So I don't have to worry about refunding the buyer or messaging them or anything like that. Cause they still get the exact same part they ordered in the exact same condition. And uh, no problems in the end, just a little bit more work. Right here was a nice order. I sold six torsos, all of which were sold as damaged in some way or form. And they paid $21.09 after tax and shipping. So that was a nice sale. These ones are, a lot of the older pirate ones, uh, five of them are the same one. They were listed in two separate lots because they had different conditions and one's a more modern one. And so yeah, that's nice. And then when I only sell a few parts in an order and stuff like that, I just put them first into a smaller bag. Then I grab a business card like this and then I just put it like that. And then let's see if I can do this with one hand. Here I first put, oh, that box is in the way over there. First put the business card in. And let's try and do this with one hand. I think the bag closed up again. Let's grab this. Actually, let me use my camera hand uh, like that. Okay. So then I just put the smaller bag in there on top of the business card. So that way it doesn't move around a whole bunch during shipping. And so I do that when it's only a few items in an order. I don't do it every time, but I try to do it whenever I can remember to. So that way it's just got more... Um, it won't um, rattle around in shipping and get damaged, and it's just a bit more presentable. My sister has been sorting these 2x2 two two jumper plates, and I think there is a lot of these 2x2 two two, uh, light bluish gray jumpers. Like, these are stacks of individual jumper plates. Like, there is so many of them. And look, there's still piles of them in here. Wow, and this is just used. Like, I mean, this here is just from about, like, 1,500 pounds of use. There's this many 2x2 two two jumper plates. Wow, that is amazing. And that's just in one color. And look how many dark blues there are. Wow, that's incredible. And then a couple of reddish brown. And then I can't quite tell what this container is. It might just be a mishmash of all the ones that didn't go into these containers slash unsorted maybe or maybe this stuff is just waiting for the other stuff to get listed and then 
sorted into containers once there's containers most likely yeah that makes sense because i can't see any of them that are in any of the other containers except for maybe reddish brown yeah reddish brown is still in there i see this one here so i'll just quickly put that guy in there but wow there is a lot of them well i think i broke the brick link forms one second let me just grab the scroll bar uh actually scroll back up okay this is um a message i posted <laughs> um i did not mean for it to be like that but uh <laughs> pretty funny just created an instagram reel for the first time in a long time i might throw it up after this clip i don't know if i'll be able to or if you do it'll be in a vertical format and not a horizontal one but i'm gonna see how it does it was the process of getting some uh one of these parts and photographing the image and then uploading the image to bricklink and i'm gonna just see how it does on instagram hopefully it'll do well and i might do them more in the future let's see if we can improve this image this is the old image i got some parts i sifted through them and i've got three candidates so i'm going to try and find which one's in the best condition and we'll see which one is this one definitely looks to be the best candidate a bit of a mold mark on the side so i'm going to clean this up now got to spray it with a little bit of air to get all the tiny pieces of dust off now now take photos of the part can't forget to get the lighting in place and now the other side email myself the images find the best image resize the image and then crop the image and then download the image then erase the image background then download the image then re-upload the image then resize the image then download the image then upload the image then rotate the image then save the image then upload the image then crop the image then resize the image then save the image as PNG, then go to add image, then get the part number, paste the part number, select the color, verify the number, and upload the image. Then double check everything, and then upload. And for comparison, old image and new image. Like and follow if you want to see the second part where I combine the front and the back of the part to create a new image for an alternate image. And it's that time again. I must grab the parts and put them in the garbage. I think I walked in on a crime scene. Blood. We're out of yogurt, so I have to go back down to get yogurt, even though I just came up from downstairs. How unfortunate. Let's go get the yogurt. Turn that light up and run into the creepy basement. Turn these lights on. Grab this light. Run forward to the fridge. Find the yogurt right here. Grab the yogurt. Close the fridge door. Run back over here. Turn the light off. Run over here. Turn these lights off. And go back upstairs. And now I got yogurt. Rice and yogurt. So this is the end of the vlog, and as is normal, here's an update on uh, the Galador stuff. I've still got, like, I mean, pretty much all of it still here. I did manage to actually upload an image for uh, one of the parts, but uh, I did also add a variant to the catalog, just waiting for it to be approved of this thing without the battery pack, and uh, waiting for that to be approved, but that's uh all um maybe by next time oh that hand just looks super creepy compared to all the rest of them is there any more like this huh don't think i saw this one before who knows uh but yeah hopefully i'll have more listed by the next vlog but uh who knows thank you for watching if you got this far i might actually try to upload some tutorial videos on youtube on adding images and stuff to the bricklink catalog uh, just through the way I do it to see if I can help some people because when the forms there's often people asking about how to do stuff like that So I might try to do a video on that. I have no idea I don't even know how to do screen recordings or anything like that So who knows if there's even any free options for screen recorders or if they're all just paid ones Or that have the logo flying across them. I'll look it up and figure that out and i might do tutorials for stuff like that just so that whenever someone asks in the forum about it i can link them to the video and so i'll try and focus on some of that stuff but now i've got to edit the video currently it is 1 13 p.m and this is the end of the vlog thank you for watching and i'll be posting another one on saturday